Councils for Lent from the Lenten Spring by Father Thomas Hopko Open to me the doors of repentance. After the reading of the Gospel at Matins on each Lord's Day during the Lenten season, the Church chants the following hymns of repentance. Open to me the doors of repentance, O life-giver, for my spirit rises early to pray towards your holy temple, bearing the temple of my body all defiled. But in your compassion purify me by the loving-kindness of your mercy. Lead me on the paths of salvation, O Mother of God, for I have profaned my soul with shameful sins and have wasted my life in laziness. But by your intercessions deliver me from all impurity. When I think of the many evil things I have done, wretch that I am, I tremble at the fearful day of judgment. But trusting in your loving kindness like David, I cry out to you, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy. These hymns are related to the full recitation of Psalm 50, which is chanted year-round at the church services, it being perhaps the most used psalm in the Orthodox liturgy. It is a psalm attributed to David when he committed adultery and murder and then turned to God in repentance. The New Testament begins with the preaching of repentance. St. John the Baptist begins his ministry with a message, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus himself begins with these very same words. He claims to come precisely to call sinners to repentance. Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Just so, I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. These words of Jesus do not mean that there are people who have no need of repentance. According to the Lord and to the entire scriptures of God, there is no person who is without sin and therefore without the need for repentance. The words of Jesus here are rather to emphasize how God loves every person, how he sends his Son for each lost soul, how Christ, the Good Shepherd, will leave the ninety-nine whom he already has in order to seek out and to save the one who is lost. Jesus' point is to insist on the value of every single person. He wants no one to be lost and dead. He wants every last one to be found alive with God. We need to repent. This is the message. And repentance means change. It means a turning of one's mind and heart to God. It means the recognition of one's errors and faults and the firm desire to do something about it. It means violent action in the deepest and most hidden parts of the human spirit. It means brutal self-knowledge. It means open confession. It is an exacting affair involving one's total person and life. St. John Climacus, in his famous book, The Ladder of Divine Ascent, to find repentance for Christians in this way. Repentance is the renewal of baptism and is a contract with God for a fresh start in life. Repentance goes shopping for humility and is ever distrustful of bodily comfort. Repentance is critical awareness and a sure watch over oneself. Repentance is the daughter of hope and the refusal to despair. Repentance is reconciliation with the Lord by the performance of good deeds, which are the opposites of the sins. It is the purification of conscience and the voluntary endurance of affliction. The repenting person deals out his own punishment, for repentance is the fierce persecution of the stomach and the flogging of the soul into a tense awareness. May we all, through our abstinence, attain to this intense awareness of soul during the Lenten spring. 
Let us bring tears of repentance to the Lord, as did the publican. Let us fall before him as sinners before the feet of our Master, for he desires the salvation of all people, granting forgiveness to all who repent. For he took human flesh for our sake, though he is God, co-eternal with the Father. Let us all humble ourselves, O people, groaning and lamenting and beating our conscience, that on the day of judgment we may receive forgiveness and be numbered with the righteous and faithful. Let us pray to see the true peace of the age to come, where there is no more sorrow or sighing, in the glorious Eden fashioned by Christ, for he is God, co-eternal with the Father.